non-GUI object creation. Basically, you can create accounts, mailboxes, mail-enabled contacts, and distribution lists. And here's some samples that you can use to create some of these objects in your own organization. Now, the most difficult one to deal with is users with mailboxes. And the reason is because you have to handle the password in a very specific way. When you start to synchronize information from the Lipton Legal Human Resources database into Active Directory, you have to assign each user a password of some kind. Now, you can make the password something generic, or you can build the password on the fly, which is what we're going to do when you go when we get to the next video and you see our SQL, what's called a, a view. Um, but in some way, shape, or form, you have to create a password that meets Active Directory complexity requirements and is handled in a semi-secure way. Now, what we're doing here is not secure because the password right here is in plain text. But there are ways to make it a little bit more secure. We're just not going to worry about that in this course. What we're worried about is figuring out how to put the password into Active Directory. Now, you can't pass the password as plain text to the new mailbox command. You have to encrypt it in some way. So we use the convert to secure string commandlet to do that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create user mailboxes in two steps. First, we're going to assign to the password variable a secure string called password pound sign 123. And we're going to use convert to secure string to do that. And so let's see what happens when we do that. So I'm going to cut and paste this into PowerShell. And you're going to see what happens, which is basically nothing. When I do dollar sign password to display it back, it's just going to tell me it's a system.security.secure string. It's not actually going to tell me what the password is. And you won't be able to get that back. And that's okay. Um, you know what the password is by, um, well, if the screen was bigger, by the fact that you passed it this string in the um, command where you assigned to the password variable a secure string. Now, since we've identified that password, we can then do new mailbox and we can create something for Chris Johnson. Now, note here we're doing new mailbox. We're assigning a user principal name of C. Johnson at LiptonLegal.com. Again, user principal name is pretty critical when you start creating mail enabled mailboxes or mail enabled users. Um, the user principal name becomes the user's email address, primary email address. We have an alias of C. Johnson. We're going to put his mailbox into the database called Mailbox Database that happens to exist in the first storage group. Remember, in Exchange 2007, it's highly recommended that you have a one-to-one -one relationship between storage groups and mailbox databases. Um, that is, you, only, you should only have one mailbox in a single storage group. Um, with the enterprise version of Exchange 2007, you can have up to 50 storage groups um, and 50 mailboxes, mailbox databases on a single server. So this shouldn't present much of a problem to have um, one mailbox per storage group. We'll give it a name of C. Johnson. We'll put them in the organizational unit users with a password of dollar sign password. And what's going to happen here is PowerShell will automatically um, assign this converted string to the password variable and then pass it to Active Directory to use as the user's password. We're going to give him a first name of Chris, a last name of Johnson, and a display name of Chris Johnson, which I thought all made sense. There we go. The account was created. Now we're going to do get-mailbox to see if it really was created. And you see indeed that the name, that the mailbox for C. Johnson was indeed created. Now, what would have happened if we try to pass just a normal password here? It wouldn't have worked. And I'm going to show you that here in just a second. We're going to change all these to two so that um, we don't get any errors about duplicates. And there we go. And we'll try to do new mailbox. And you're going to see that PowerShell says, hey, I can't do anything with this password thing you just gave me. It has to be, it's trying to convert the password value to system.security.secure string. And it's telling you that's invalid. You can't do that here. Go back and try again. 
So in some way, shape, or form, you really have to make sure that you provide that password in a secure way so that PowerShell and Active Directory can handle it in the way that's most appropriate. Now, fortunately, that's the only object that really has this kind of a problem. Um, nothing else uses a password, so it, it really makes sense that you're not going to end up with a problem um, with another type of Active Directory object, since the only object that uses a password is the user type. Now, I said before that mail-enabled contacts are created using the new mail contact commandlet in PowerShell. Very simple here. We're going to copy and paste this commandlet and command into PowerShell. We're going to give it a name of Ted Cahill with an external email address of ted at example.com. And we're going to put it in the organizational unit named customers. Let's see what happens. Oops, the customers organizational unit was not found. That's actually good that that got spit back. What we're going to need to do when we create our synchronization tool from the human resources database and the sales database into Active Directory is to make sure that we write a routine that takes into consideration the fact that an organizational unit that we try to specify may not exist and it will have to be created on the fly. So I'm going to go back to my domain controller and I'm going to create a new organizational unit called customers. Now I want to point this out as well. Protect container from accidental deletion. One complaint that there used to be with Active Directory users and computers is that if you accidentally deleted an item, you were kind of messed up for a while. What this object or this checkbox does is exactly what it says. If I create this, and I then go up here and I hit the delete button. It's going to say, do you really want to do this? Yes, I can't because the object is protected from accidental deletion. That's new in Windows Server 2008, and it's really nice. Let's go back over here and try this again. Voila, we now have a mail-enabled contact named Ted Cahill. If we go back over to the domain controller and refresh, there he is. Pretty nice. And if we go to the attribute editor, we're going to see that all of his stuff is actually created. So there we go.